welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Super excited about today's video. We're going to be dealing with the new GFCI requirements for the 2023 code cycle. If you're jumping all the way from the 17, you may need to look at some of the 2020 things, and I'll try to cover some of them today because there were some huge leaps from 17 to 20, and then there's some huge leaps from 20 to 23, but let's dive right in. So we find ourselves in 210.8a. And we're starting with dwelling units. Remember, dwelling unit is a defined term. All 125 volt through 250 volt receptacles installed in the following locations and supplied by single phase branch circuits that are 150 volts to less, remember that's two ground, shall have ground fault protection. So it's your typical areas like we've seen bathrooms, garages, outdoors. I believe that was a new one. I've got the 2020 pulled up here. Let's see if that's highlighted in the 2020 for you guys. Okay, outdoors. So out, these are receptacles outdoors. That was already included. We'll talk about outlets outdoors here in just a moment. Crawl spaces, basements, kitchens. A uh, new one in the 2023 is areas and sinks, areas with sinks and permanent provisions for food preparation, beverage preparation, or cooking. Because what can happen is if it doesn't meet the definition of a kitchen, then you might say, well, I don't have to do GFCI protection. Well, now it's saying areas, just an area. It doesn't have to meet the definition of a kitchen. An area with a sink and permanent provisions for food, for food preparation. So in my opinion, just a small countertop. Sink over here, small countertop, that whole area now is going to have to be ground fault protected. Of course, that's going to be up to the authority having jurisdiction. Let's come over here, sinks. And that was it for the uh, dwelling unit, which I was really surprised. The only thing they added was part seven, and it's uh, areas with sinks and permanent provisions for food, food preparation. And most of us wouldn't even try to fight that, uh, you know, not putting it there. That would be something that we would just naturally do. Now let's go ahead and look at other than dwelling units. And I will say this, they did kind of restructure it a little bit. Uh, the, just the whole kind of article, if you want to get in there and look at it, it what, it's not major to me, but they did kind of restructure the wording. But let's look at other than dwelling units. It says all 125 through 250 volts supplied by single phase branch circuits that are 150 volts ground or less, 50 amps or less, and all receptacles. Remember, we're dealing with receptacles only up until this point that are supplied by three phase branch circuits. So when you get an other than dwelling units, it also incorporates three phrase, uh, three phrase, three phase branch circuits in these receptacles. So remember, everything I'm getting ready to list, this only counts for receptacles up until this point of this video. All right, so bathrooms, kitchens has been added into other than dwelling units, areas with sinks and uh, you know beverage preparation, they added that. And this is kind of one that was interesting to me. Number four says buffet serving areas with permanent provisions for serving um, beverages or cooking. And what these are, are kind of just prep areas. Like if you ever been to a hospital where they don't really cook anything in this specific area, but they're prepping food or they're serving food. They're not cooking there. So it's not a kitchen, but they're serving food. They're saying, Hey, if you're pe prepping beverages or food, that area needs to be GFCI protected as well. Still going to include rooftops, outdoors, all these different things. Uh, they did change part seven. It says sinks where receptacle and cord and plug connected are fixed or stationary appliances. So let's say you're next to a sink and you know, you're know you by the sink and there is a, and it has to be within six foot. I do want to make that distinction. Let's say you have a sink right here in a commercial kitchen and you have one of these giant mixers. Well, that receptacle as well has to be GFCI protected if it's within six foot of the sink. So I don't know, they may have had a problem with that. They did add something interesting in part 13, aquariums, bait wells, or similar aquatic vessels, containers such as tanks or bowls where the receptacles are within six feet of the top edge of the rim of the conductive supporting frame. So we're talking about if you're at a restaurant and you see a nice fish tank. We're talking about at bait places where you might go get your minnows and stuff. So those things are gonna need to be GFCI protected as well if they weren't already included in one of the other sections. Now there are some new uh, exceptions and things, but it's not really uh, you know, gonna do anything huge for us. Uh, uh, crawl space lighting outlets are still in there, so they didn't take that out. And they've changed Part D, and they've just called it specific appliances. So these specific appliances are required to be GFCI protected. And I do want to note, I'm going to read it. It says, shall be provided for the branch circuit or outlet supplying the appliances that are in this area, 150 volts ground to less, whether it's single or three phase. 
So we have to make this change now. Up until this point, we've really been talking about receptacles in our main areas. Now we're talking about outlets. Remember, an outlet can be receptacle, it can be hardwired, or it can be lighting. So those are our three main types of outlets. So in this part, in specific appliances, it doesn't matter if it's hardwired, cord and plug connected, or whatever, this is going to be required. And they have a whole new highlighted section, including automotive vacuum machines, drinking water coolers and bottle filling stations, high pressure spray washing machines, tire inflating machines, vending machines, sub pumps, just straight out sub pumps, no matter where it's at, dishwashers, electric ranges. So it's not if in the 2020, if I'm not mistaken, it's if the range was within six foot of the sink, it had to be GFCI protected. Now it just says electric ranges. Then it goes on to say wall mount oven, counted mounter cooking units, clothes dryers, and microwave ovens. So your microwave, your clothes dryer, your wall mounted oven, your counted mounter cooking unit, your electric range, your dishwasher, all have to be GFCI protected. Now that's gonna be huge. So that's gonna add a lot of cost. I don't worry so much about the cost. And the customer doesn't care to have the best. Everybody wants the best. Nobody comes in their home and says, well, I just want whatever crap you can give me. Everybody wants the best, so just give it to them. Don't be that electrician. I know electricians that are riding around eating soup with a fork. They're busy, busy, busy. They charge peanuts, and they never make anything, and they never do anything. And they probably offer the same quality work as that. Don't be that electrician. Decide that you're going to do the highest quality work and charge a premium price and deliver a premium service. So you got to decide what type of electrician you want to be. Now let's switch over to part F, which is outdoor outlets. So just we got to watch this here. Let's look at part E real quick. It says equipment requiring servicing. It says GFCI protection shall be provided for receptacles that are required in 210.63. Probably going to be HVAC, but I'm not going to jump over there right now and get too lost. Let's look at part F. For dwelling units, outdoor all outdoor outlets. That would include lighting, hardwired, and also receptacles. But I think there's an exception that you don't have to do lighting, but let's see if it carried over into 2023. It says in 210, if unless it's already covered in one of these previous sections, all outlets supplied by single phase branch circuits rated 150 volts to ground or less shall be uh, and and 50 amps or less shall be provided with GFCI protection. And this is in dwelling units only. They include garages that have floors located at or below grade, accessory buildings or boathouses. But if you look at that first part, it says all outdoor outlets and those that are listed down below. So this is just adding to it, giving you kind of some examples. So it says all outdoor outlets, included outlets installed in the following location. So it's saying, hey, here's some examples, garages, accessory buildings, boathouses, but all outdoor outlets are required. Let's look at the exceptions real quick. It says GFCI protection shall not be required on outdoor lighting um, on those outlets other than some specific ones. So it does exempt lighting, which I don't understand why it exempts lighting. It's one of the most dangerous things out there to me is outdoor lighting. How many times have you been up to a pole and it's faulting or a pole and it's tripping or it's exploded or it's burnt back? So I don't know why they exclude lighting. I understand that it could be um, in a, an issue for getting in and out of the egress or if it's dark outside, but from a shock hazard and electrocution hazard, lighting, outdoor lighting is probably one of the most dangerous things there is. And then exception two says GFCI protection shall not be required for listed HVAC equipment. This exception shall expire September 1st, 2026. All right, so that's new. I did not know that. It says GFCI protection shall not be required for listed HVAC equipment. So if it's not listed, it wouldn't count. It says this exception shall expire September 1st, 2026. So when they drop the next code cycle, they're warning the market, you need to get your machine, your HVAC machine, up to code by 2026. So this is huge. So these are the major things that have changed, been modified in the 2023. Like I said, if you're jumping from the 2017 to the 23, you need to go back in the 2020 and take a look. I'll take this minute to give a plug to NFPA link. I love NFPA, everything they do. We might say some stuff about the code book, but I mean, that's just part of our job. But NFPA link gives you access to all of their code books. You can use a keyword search. It's one of the greatest things they've ever invented. So I want to thank NFPA for everything that they do and for creating NFPA link. 
I am the electrical code coach. I want you to know that I'm praying for you today. And I want you to know that no matter what's been said about you in the past, what you've thought about you in the past, um, you know, where someone's pigeon held you, you can't do this, you can't do that. Those things are in the past. That's not who you are now. It's time to move forward. It's time to regroup. It's time to change your legacy. And I want you to know that I'm praying for you every single day. I just want to see you win. And part of you winning the week, winning the month, winning the year is you winning today. So I want you to go out and win today. What does that look like for you? What does it look like for you to win the day? Because you can only win one day at a time. I am the Electrical Code Coach. And if there's anything that you need from me, you can email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.